My name is Talia Fraser and I'm currently a third year nursing student and today I have a video presentation on the breastfeeding challenges of a cleft lip and yeast infection. I will be working through the situated clinical decision making framework to guide my care of mother and infant experiencing these challenges. This framework will then allow me to reflect on the overall outcome. The clinical decision-making framework is a tool used to assist the nurse in making decisions based on more than just a basic understanding of the situation. The tool works through the areas of knowledge, cues, judgment, decisions, and ends with evaluation of outcomes. The first step in our clinical decision-making framework is knowledge. We begin with knowledge of the self. As a nursing student, I have not yet worked with an infant with a cleft lip. I have, however, worked with patients who have had yeast infections. Therefore, I am confident in the knowledge of one area of the breastfeeding challenges. Next, we move on to knowing the case. Yeast infections, also known as thrush, are caused by the fungus Candidus albican. This fungus thrives in warm, moist, dark areas and replicates in the presence of sugars, including those sugars in breast milk. The change from a dry to wet atmosphere, like in a lactating mother, also create favorable conditions for yeast overgrowth. There are many causes of yeast infections, and some include core positioning and latch, antibiotics, diabetes, and hormone levels. Also, babies born to mothers with a vaginal yeast infection may also develop oral thrush. Cleft lips occur in about one in every 700 births, and they develop in early pregnancy when the sides of the lip and roof of the mouth do not fuse together as they should. The degree of the cleft lip can vary from a mild notching of the lip to severe large opening from the lip up through the nose. A cleft can either be on one side, called unilateral, or both sides, bilateral. Although the exact cause is unknown, genetics as well as environmental factors play a role. With a yeast infection, several factors can affect the effectiveness of breastfeeding. These infants may have sore mouths, causing them to refuse to nurse, or they may nurse for a moment and then cry. Also, the mother may be too sore or irritated to want to breastfeed. A cleft lip, on the other hand, can interfere with breastfeeding as it prevents proper suction during the feed. Milk extraction from the breast is therefore inefficient, and the required strong attachment to the breast is absent. Overall, feeding difficulties occur as the infant may be unable to suck properly as the lip is not completely formed. Next is knowing the client. I would like to know about the mother and the infant as a dyad and their baselines. For example, what is the classification of cleft lip the baby has? I would like to know basic baseline information, like does the baby normally breastfeed? How effective is the feeding? Is the baby gaining weight? Is the output of the baby adequate? I would also like to know how frequently the baby feeds. Lastly, I would want to know if the mother has ever had a yeast infection before. If she has, I would want to know how it was treated and what worked best for her. Next, in our clinical decision-making framework, we move on to cues. Cues include observations or laboratory and assessment data. With a yeast infection, signs and symptoms in the mother may include nipple or breast pain, burning or itchiness, or a shiny appearance of the nipple or breast. Nipples may also have white dots and appear swollen. The infant may be asymptomatic, or they may have creamy white patches on their oral mucosa that does not scrape off. They may experience poor feedings, and they also may have a diaper rash. Although there are lab tests to positively identify candida, many doctors will just treat with an antifungal medication if suspected. Usually, a cleft lip is immediately identifiable at birth and the physician may have started a plan of care. The cleft lip will most likely indicate feeding difficulties. I would want to check the baby's weight and growth to see if he's gaining properly. I would then ask about frequency of feeds. Next, I would assess the breastfeeding relationship. I would observe the comfort of the mother and baby with feeds and evaluate the effectiveness of the feed. I would anticipate a poor latch, therefore an ineffective feed. Finally, I would address any concerns the mother has in regards to the breastfeeding relationship. The next step in our clinical decision-making framework is judgment. After organizing my observations in history, I believe that the mother and infant are experiencing yeast infections, and the infant also has a unilateral cleft lip. Signs and symptoms of the yeast infection of the mother include itchy and shiny nipples, 
as well as a vaginal yeast infection. Signs and symptoms of the infant include white coating of tongue and poor feeding. The mother is already aware of the cleft lip. I would consult a physician to organize care of the surgery for the cleft lip, as well as prescribe treatment of the yeast infections for the entire family. I would also like to consult a lactation consultant to follow up with the mother in terms of the breastfeeding relationship. Finally, I would suggest support groups to the family involving other parents' experiences with an infant who has a cleft lip. My overall priorities for these breastfeeding challenges include the three E's discussed in our course content. Early breastfeeding, exclusive breastfeeding, and effective breastfeeding. I would want to work through each of these subjects with the mother to ensure the breastfeeding relationship is as optimal as it can be under these circumstances. Our next step in the clinical decision-making framework is the decision of what to do. In this situation, I am confident in believing the infant and mother have yeast infections. I would then like to follow up with the family after it is treated to ensure symptoms are gone. I would also want to educate the mother about hygiene in regards to yeast infections. This includes cleaning her nipples before and after feedings, as well as disinfecting any pacifiers. Finally, I would educate what to look out for if a yeast infection were to reoccur. Cleft lips are generally identified early in the pregnancy, and decisions regarding the surgery would have been discussed with the physician. As a nurse, I would want to know when the surgery is scheduled and ensure the family knows what the surgery entails. In the meantime, I would provide lots of nursing support to the mother in terms of how to help breastfeed her baby with a cleft lip. A baby with a cleft lip is unable to form proper suction, therefore they may not get enough breast milk to meet their nutritional requirements. Nursing support would include discussing the three E's of breastfeeding with the mother. First of all, I would identify if the mother has been breastfeeding since the beginning. I would then explain that exclusive breastfeeding is very important, and with her infant's cleft lip, small, frequent feedings are recommended. Finally, I would go over the best positions to breastfeed. It is helpful if her baby sits upright to ensure that the breast milk would enter the stomach and would not sit in the mouth and then seep out of the cleft lip opening. So the following teaching aid is to help nurses explain to parents the feeding difficulties that an infant with a cleft lip or palate experiences. So this one is an infant with no cleft lip and in the straw there is no hole. In this straw there is a hole. It demonstrates how a child or infant with a cleft lip uh, would be able to drink or breastfeed. So we're going to start with the child with no cleft lip. I'm able to drink the entire uh, cup of juice with no problems. So it's all gone. With an infant with cleft lip, there's a hole here. And as you'll see, it is quite difficult to actually take in this whole amount of fluid. And I am taking some in, but as you can see, it involves a lot of effort. So that just kind of shows the parents how feeding is very difficult for the infant because there is no suction around the nipple. So it's hard for the infant to properly suck. A really easy fix to this before the surgery would be for the mother to just place her finger over the cleft lip to provide closure or suction. I'm just going to demonstrate this by placing my finger over the hole and just drink. So it's a lot easier. So that is the teaching aid. If the mother was having a lot of struggles breastfeeding, there are many bottles specially designed with valves to help control the air the baby takes in and prevent milk from going back into the bottle. Our last step in the clinical decision-making framework is to evaluate the outcomes. In this case, I am confident that my decisions were best practice. The yeast infections have cleared up and the breastfeeding is going well as the baby is gaining weight. Overall, the feeding relationship is optimal. The mother has joined a support group and has connected with other parents who also have a child with a cleft lip. In conclusion, we have worked through the situated clinical decision-making framework to identify a yeast infection and cleft lip. Overall, we have stressed the importance of early, exclusive, and effective breastfeeding 
and provided continuous and ongoing support to the family. So that concludes my video presentation and I just want to say thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed it.